<laughs> Hi and welcome to the ninth and last video in the Glacier Image Velocimetry or GIV2 Toolbox video tutorial series. Um, in the last few videos, you've all learned how to run GIV, how to prepare the inputs for it, how the model works, and how to interpret its results. I just wanted to close off this, this series of videos with a, with a brief video touching on the future of feature tracking, um, what some of my thoughts are, and some questions that um, hopefully you can all think about as well while you're running it, um, and, and help bring some, some answers about this. Um, the, the questions that I wanted to really ask everyone, uh, is feature tracking really the ideal method for deriving glacier velocity maps? Or can we do better? Do we currently know of any better methods? Um, and what next? So for the first question, I think that <clears throat> almost, almost yes right now, that we don't really know of many better methods for deriving glacier velocity fields than feature tracking, there are other methods that are as good involving radar-based imagery. However, feature tracking of optical imagery is really one of, one of the best methods that we have available for producing glacier velocities. Um, allows us to do it on a global scale, as you can see in the It's Live or Go Live databases, and really allows us to do a lot of things that wouldn't have been possible without satellite velocimetry. Um, can we do better? Absolutely. Um, there are a number of issues with feature tracking, um, particularly involving the quality of the imagery. It can't be run in, in the night. It can't be run in cloudy data sets, which radar imagery can. Um, there are issues relating to, to the nature of the technique itself, that it solves, it solves for two unknowns. Um, flow speed and flow direction. However, only one of those is really interesting. Um, flow direction is generally pretty trivial for most glasses. So we're actually solving for, for an unknown that we don't really need to solve for, which is, which is inefficient. Um, so if we can find a way to, to remove that issue, then that would, would help. <clears throat> it also can produce physically unrealistic results with um, variations in velocity that we know are unrealistic given, given ice physics. Um, so finding ways to bring a little bit more ice physics into feature tracking would also be useful. Although the zero assumptions nature of feature tracking is also valuable in a lot of ways, particularly when running it on a regional or global scale. Um, and finally, feature tracking is fairly computationally expensive, particularly now that we're getting more and more satellite images. Um, actually, running running on a global scale is is a <clears throat> is a fairly significant issue. Um, you need a, a large supercomputer to be able to do that. Whereas, if we're able to to come up with some slightly more efficient methods of doing this, then maybe it can be ran um, more quickly and more efficiently. Um, and what next? Um, well, hopefully everyone can, can help answer that question. I think that running this on a regional and global scale is one of the next things. Running it on a very dense temporal scale is also gonna be one of the next things, particularly with commercial satellite data like Planet available every day. It gives us the potential to map out um, high temporal resolution changes in ice velocity, really understand the seasonal variability in a lot of places as well. Um, and finally, I think a lot of the questions relate to what, what scientific questions can we answer with this? Um, can we use this ice velocity to help us constrain ice thicknesses? Can we use it to, to help us understand the dynamic behavior of glaciers and how glaciers are currently retreating? Um, so I think a lot of the, the future of feature tracking is going to come from that. Anyway, I hope this series of videos has been really useful for all of you. 
um, please do get in touch if, if you have any questions or any suggestions about any of this. Um, and I look forward to seeing the results that you produce for GIV. Thanks for listening.